our people in the 60s and 70s were just trying to learn how to become Kenyans. Unfortunately, the uh, Kano government led by Mzee Jomo Kenyatta immediately began to cannibalize the independence constitution. A white you know, colonial state was replaced by a black African kleptocracy. And so the values that motivated all of us as Kenyans to fight for independence um, you know, became very tenuous. And the most significant thing that Moi did for a human rights defender like me was release all political prisoners. Little did we know that just a few years later, he was going to have more political prisoners than this country has ever seen, especially from 1982 after the attempted coup. He became totally um, intolerant. <laughs> The state um, became repressive against its own people. And when the state becomes repressive, the first thing it does is to, um, uh, you know, contract political space. The state was defined by arbitrary arrests, detentions, uh, unfair trials, uh, acts of police brutality, including uh, assassinations, rampant corruption in society, uh, the constriction of political space. We registered the organization in 1992 in, in, in Washington, D.C., and we asked Maina to come, to come home. This was early 90s. The people who, who knew what human rights was, understood the international standards and the international law around human rights, were well, not very many. So, we, but people were working from the, the basis of, we don't want to be oppressed, which is fine. But now you give them the tools and the understanding of the actual law that helps you to do that. So as NGOs are being formed, and they're not getting registration, would give them cover. Would call them project of Kenya Human Rights Commission. There is not a person with a conscience who could not be moved uh, by what happened. It's, um, I believe, uh, a curse. I was on the hunger strike with them until the last political prisoner was released. So that's significant because it was a first open defiance to President Moy, open defiance. and. It was by old mothers. That particular moment um, and subsequent moments where there were public confrontations with the state really became our birth certificate as an organization and defined us in the mind of the public as an organization that was not afraid to confront authority. The police killings uh, campaign for me was very, was very important. And it was also very creative. We began, we went to the body with the families of those people who were killed. We asked them, can you mind we work together? They say, yes, this is what we want to do. We tell them, since the police have killed your son, why don't you give the body to the police to bury it? So we say, we march. So we march with a coffin. We just go, they open. They open because they've got a coffin. It shocked me. But the police were as scared of death as we were. And so we took it and took it to Vigilant's house. We leave it there and say, police. They would beg us, oh, take it. Say, no, you killed the guy. You deal with the body. So not only were we now doing that in terms of protesting, but we're doing further research. 